Welcome to the Flippin' Right Show. I am Nick Safoni. I am your host at www.rei-tv.com. Once again, thanks for joining me. I'm so glad you can make it today. Today we're talking about having the right attitude. A little bit of BS to get the show started. Of course, we always like some BS in the morning, right? It beats napalm. I forgot what it said. Have the right attitude. How can I forget what it said? Attitude is everything in this business. Maybe second to marketing, but marketing may be second to attitude. In any case, you got to have the right attitude. And, and first off, I'm not talking, when I say have the right attitude, I am absolutely not talking about going around always smiling and being all happy-go-lucky and thinking positive and the glass is half full and half empty. And yeah, of course, you got to have a good attitude, a positive attitude, that type of thing. I'm not talking about singing kumbaya and holding hands when you're looking at houses. What I'm talking about is your mindset, and today we're going to focus on having the right attitude when we talk to sellers. There's a certain attitude that you have, there's a certain air that you have to have around you when you're, when you're addressing sellers. Let's face it, we're trying to get them to do something, and first off, if your seller's difficult, if they're, oh, they just don't, you know, they want, if they're difficult in any way, they're probably the excuse me, they're probably the wrong seller. You don't want to deal with some chowderhead that's trying to get full price on his house. We're looking for the low-hanging fruit, we're looking for the motivated sellers, but sometimes you got to sway them a little bit and kick them this way or that way. Let's face it, deals aren't always found. In a lot of cases, deals are made, and your attitude is going to help that happen. So, um, first off, your attitude has to be, even if you're a new investor, your attitude has to be, I am a real estate investor. Yeah, that seems like common sense to most of us, but that's good. Your attitude has to be with those sellers. I'm a real estate investor. Mr. Seller, Miss Seller, I know you have a problem right now. I'm here to solve that problem. You got to look them in the eye, price them high, and watch them buy. And that's what's going to get you the deals. You, you got to have confidence in yourself. And I always say, in many cases, you're going to have to fake it till you make it. So if you go in and you let these sellers know, well, this is my first deal, but I really want to be a real estate investor when I grow up and someday I'm going to get a deal, you're not going to get the deal. Your attitude has to be, I've done plenty of these deals. And you don't have to come out and say it, you don't have to lie about it, but they can feel it if you have the right attitude when you're talking to them and there's a lot of confidence in your voice. So you gotta fake it till you make it. You gotta, you gotta be the one first off asking the questions. Now this goes on the phone as well as in person. The person asking the questions is the person who's in control. You do need to make sure that you're asking the questions. Because if you're on the phone with them and they ask you a question and you answer, and they ask you a question and you answer, and they ask you a question and you answer, you're not getting anywhere. You're following their agenda. They're pulling you down their street instead of you pulling them down yours. Now, there's nothing wrong with them asking you questions. As a matter of fact, you can cut all your confability. You can ruin your confability, <laughs> cut all your credibility if you won't answer their questions. So you do have to give them that opportunity. But the ideal way to answer a question is to answer their question followed by a question of your own, which gets them you know, flowing more in your direction. So they ask a question like, let's, let's say we're talking about a sub two deal, and the, and the seller asks, you know, but what happens if, if you don't make my payments? And you know, the obvious, this is the way I answer, because I answer everything truth, truthful, is, well, Mr. Seller, if I didn't make your payments, the house would be foreclosed, but then all my work, all my time, and all the money I've put into this, into this house would be lost. Now, how, you know, what's the least you would take if we were going to pay you cash, or if we were going to take over the payments within the next 30 days? or whatever that might be. So you answer their question, and then you ask a question of your own. And you know, it's tough to do. So you might want to start practicing with it. Practice doing it in your day-to-day -day life. You know, your wife asks you, um, honey, is it okay if I just make a frozen pizza for dinner tonight? And you say, sure, hon, a frozen pizza would be fine. What do you want to watch tonight afterwards? Or something goofy like that. Just, you know, uh, get in the habit of answering a question and asking a question. And, and once you do it for a little bit, it'll, it'll kind of become, like I said, it'll become a habit. Uh, so be in control and ask the question. Now another part of the attitude has to be everybody's doing it. When you're talking to these folks, let's face it, we're proposing something to these sellers that in most cases they have never heard of. Now if we're proposing a cash buy or we're proposing to lease it from them or whatever it might be, that's not really untraditional. They hear about that. But when we're proposing, especially a subject to deal or maybe an option deal where we want to get an option on their pretty house and try to find a buyer, it's something most people haven't heard of. But you have to give the impression and have the 
attitude that everybody does it. It's something that's absolutely normal, Mrs. Seller. I'm shocked that you've never heard about somebody giving their house away and letting somebody else make the payments. So you have to come across like that's something we do all the time. It's normal in this business. It's happened many times. And like in my case, I'll tell them, oh, we've done this many, many times. You know, and I would sh actually show them a list of the houses that we've done it with if I was there face to face. We have our little presentation book. Which means that's I, I'm going to have an episode about how to make a presentation book. I'm going to ring the disclaimer bell just in case I forget for a while. So none of you come back and say, you said you were going to do an episode. But of course, that would be a good reminder and I'd probably do it. In any case, so you got to have the idea, the attitude, and the confidence, and the uh, air about you that this is something normal, whatever it is that you're proposing. It's got to come off that way. One thing, I know some of you guys are new. I, saw, I know some of you guys are nervous. I know some of you guys don't know what to say. First off, have a script. If you have a script in front of you, it's going to help you a lot better get through that phone call. Uh, even to this day, most of the guys that work for me and myself, when I talk to a seller on the phone, I have somewhat of a script in front of me. So have a script. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't take a trip halfway across the country without figuring out what roads you're going to take first. So have a script. I know it's probably a stupid thing to say, but I'm sure there's some of you that don't have scripts out there and you're just kind of winging it. Now, by having a script, it's going to help you be more confident, and you're not going to come off as nervous. You don't, and it's okay to come off. Let me mention this. I was talking to my good friend Charles Dudley, who is a very, very successful investor on the East Coast. And he actually practices throwing ams and um, uh, does, things like that, into the conversation. So he doesn't sound too polished. You don't want to sound like a big wheeler-dealer kind of guy. Because... You know, they just might not trust you for some reason. I mean, you can't seem stupid either, but if you feel that you come off too polished, maybe throw some pauses in. Don't be afraid to say, you know, Mr. Seller, I don't know. You know, you, you want to come off as a regular guy just like them, but you're in a situation to help them out of the deal. In any case, try not to show your nerves when you're going through this. And granted, even if you have a script, that seller doesn't have a script. Um, so they don't always say what we want them to say. They don't always answer the way our script plans on them answering. But in any case, they have no clue what you're supposed to say. So if you make a mistake, who cares? Just keep on going. They don't know you screwed up. They have no idea that you said the wrong thing or that you're at the wrong part of the script or whatever it might be. So remember, we deal with motivated sellers. We pick the low-hanging fruit. More preferably, we shake the tree and let the fruit fall into our hands. So if we're dealing with people that the way we say something is going to make a big difference in the deal, we're not dealing with the right person. When you've got someone that says more or less, Mr. Buyer, I'll do anything. Just, I, I got to get rid of this house. Tell me what you can do. I'll do almost anything to get rid of this house. Those are the people that we want to find. And if you're not finding enough of those, and I'm guilty of this myself in many cases, you're not marketing enough or your marketing isn't right. So get your marketing in place. Anyway, so um, let these people know that, I mean, not them though. You have to realize that when you make a mistake, they have no idea that you made a mistake unless you start getting all goofy and fumbly and all sweaty and whatever you want to do. Um, you can't have an attitude like you're selling something. You're not selling anything. That's why we call the person with the house that calls us or that we're calling back, we call them the seller because they are selling us. Never get the attitude that you have to talk them into something. Your attitude should always be. I got the best thing around, I got the best thing since sliced bread, I got the solution to your problem, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you just need to follow me down the yellow brick road, and you're going to end up in Oz, and I'm going to have your problem. I'm going to take your problem from you if you let me. So you, you got to make sure that they're, you're not trying to convince them of anything, they should be trying to talk you into buying that house. That's the attitude that should be overwhelming on the call that they're calling you you're asking them questions and they're hoping oh man I hope this guy can help me out of this situation I've you know we've had this house we can't make the payments anymore we're making two payments that we're getting divorced there's a foreclosure happening grandpa died whatever it might be you got to have the attitude and make that whole call the whole feel of that call that they are trying to talk you into something so you should be using lines like well you know we're looking at a lot of houses this week if your house qualifies, it might be something we can work with. The word if is a magic word in this business when you're talking to sellers. Your attitude should always be with them. You know, you should never be like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy to be talking to you. Mr. Seller, this sounds a little great. Even if you, in the back of your head you're thinking, ka-ching, this is a $50,000 deal. You don't want to let them know that. You don't want to come off that way to them. You want to always have the attitude that they are selling you. Let them talk you into 
buying that house from them. And they will feel much better about it. If you just jump at it, they're also going to hang up that phone and think, oh, honey, you know, that might have been a little too easy. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this. You have to always make them, uh, you know, feel that they did their job. They won by convincing you to buy that house or come out to look at it or sign the contracts or whatever it might be. So use the if word a lot. And one of the things that's really harmful in this business is desperation. I know, you're new at this, maybe you're new, maybe you're not, but some of you are new at this, and you want that deal like you want air. You've had a few contracts signed, none of them went through, you know you could make it in this business, if only you can get that first deal done. You can't let them know that, you can't have that attitude. Your attitude has to be, this is just another day in the office, Mr. Seller, you know, we do this all the time, we got lots of people that want us to buy their houses. We're looking at a lot of houses this week and signing a couple of contracts. If yours is one that we choose, maybe we can help you out of the situation and you know I mean there's been times where I've talked to people on the phone and I know oh my gosh this is a home run and I'm talking to them on the phone I'm trying not to get too excited I say okay Nick be slow be slow and then I hang up the phone and it's like yeah baby because I just got one so um, but in any case don't show desperation let them know uh, they should be desperate. you got to have them be desperate to work with you, not you be desperate to work with them. You have to smell confident through that phone or in person. I mean, confidence has to ooze out of you. Now, not cockiness, but confident. you got to be confident. you got to act like a professional, like you can solve their problem. And make, again, turn it around so they're the ones begging you. They're the ones that are desperate. They're the ones that need you, because really they do, especially today with so many houses out there. Don't be afraid to remind them that there's so many houses out there. It's so funny. It's so easy. It's so crazy. It's so wow. It's so easy. It's so funny. All we do is take their money. I love it. Now, a couple of reminders. Make sure that you get on our free membership list. If we're not in the launch yet and you're watching this today, middle of May 2008, whatever it might be, then get on the list up there. Put your name and uh, email in the slot so you get all the notifications. We're giving a bunch of freebies out. Those of you on the list will get a free membership when the site kicks off. Um, you're going to get free leads. You're going to get free reports, free videos, more things than just watching me every few days sit in here and, and flap my jaws. Remember a little BS today? Today's BS is have a great attitude. Stick with us. Stay in touch. Watch what's going on. We got Flippin' Midnight the first and third Friday of every night. Of every night. First and third Friday of every month. Uh, we had a great one last time. We had a special guest answering a bunch of questions for, so, for folks. We have the RE Insiders going to be kicked off soon. We're going to be doing long interviews with special guests who are going to be giving extreme, extremely good and knowledgeable training, all for nothing if you're a member. Um, if you want to be a guest on the show, if you're a trainer out there or, or you have some real estate product, I'd love to interview you, have you become a guest on the show. We can work together and partner on some things. Also, email me questions real soon. We're going to start us, uh, an episode uh, right here on rei-tv.com where we answer your questions. We'll have the whole episode. So, uh, Flippin Help, F L I P P I N, help. I said P P. Flippin Help at gmail.com and you'll uh, send me some questions there. And one of these days we'll have a show and answer all the questions. I hope this is good. Remember, have a great attitude. Make sure that you give the right impression to these people, that you're there to help them. Let them sell you. Now go make an offer.